Thanks for joining me today. I'm Curl Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Rust and Patina Essentials Brush Pack for Corel Painter Essentials 6. So let's go ahead and get started. In the brush selector in the top left, we can choose the Rust and Patina Essentials Brush category, and that gives us access to these 10 brushes here. As the name implies, these brushes are going to give you rust and patina effects. And patina is kind of what you see here. It's this blue-green pattern that you might see in aged copper, for example. So let's start at the top with Aged Brass. Over in my Layers palette here, I have several layers that I created ahead of time so that I can demonstrate here. I'm going to go ahead and create a layer up here in the top of my layers. I'll call it Aged Brass. Then I'll use my Rectangle Selection tool to draw a selection here. Let's say this will be a piece of metal. I'll switch back to my Brush tool here. The color I'm going to choose is kind of a yellowish color like this. And then I'll go ahead and paint. And just build it up back and forth. Now, if you use a small brush, you're going to get these smaller patterns. If you use a larger brush, I can enlarge my brush by holding Control and Alt and dragging my pen. Then I get larger, lumpy patterns. I'm going to make my brush smaller, and you can see I can get a nice wide range of patterns and results here. So basically, you just want to scribble around a little bit here and build up this pattern. We can deselect our selection with Control D, and there we have a strip of aged brass. I'm going to go ahead and hide that layer. Let's go ahead and switch to the next brush, and that is Aged Veiny. I have a layer here that I've already created called Aged Veiny, and we can see how this looks. If we do a before and after, you can see it gives you that really nice veiny effect. So to show you how I did that, I'll create a new layer for that. I'm gonna choose kind of a blue-green color like this. If I do a test stroke, you can see I get this very nice veiny pattern that I can kind of build up. If we wanna keep it just on this bottle here, then what you could do is create a separate layer, name that layer Mask, and then you could select Pencils, Pens, and Markers, Scratchboard Tool, select a nice bright color that you can see here, and very carefully paint over that bottle. If you need to use your eraser to clean up that edge, you could switch to your eraser if you overpainted it. But basically you're creating kind of a stencil of wherever you want to trap the paint. This will take you a bit of time, but it'll be well worth it because you can save this layer and you can use it anytime and it will limit your brush strokes to your object here and they won't go on the background. Just as well, you could turn that inside out and then you could paint only on your background and not on your object. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide this demonstration layer and I'll show you my completed mask here. If I do a before and after, you can see that it just sits right on top. Now it comes pretty close to the edge, but it doesn't cover it exactly. That's okay, that's good enough. I'll go ahead and hide that. Let's go ahead and return to the aged veiny brush now in Rust and Patina Essentials. We want to have that mask layer selected and then we want to right click on it and we want to choose select layer content. And what that does is that puts a selection around whatever is on that layer and since what's on that layer is a mask that's covering our bottle here, that's the selection we get. Then we go back to the layer that we want to paint on. We want to make sure we have that blue green color selected and we can paint and our paint stays on our bottle magically here. Now if you want to, you can play with the different composite methods. I could set this to screen if I want it to be lighter, or I could set it to multiply if I want it to be darker, or I could even try overlay. I think overlay works the best. You'll want to experiment with these different composite methods because they're going to make your paint blend a lot more naturally. But you certainly could use the normal composite method if you think that works better too. I'm going to go with overlay, and I'm going to reduce the opacity of that layer so it's a more subtle blend. Let's go ahead and deselect our selection with Control D to hide those edges. I think that looks pretty good. Let's move on to the next brush, and that is Filed Rust. Let's create a new layer for that. We want a nice rusty reddish color like this. We'll do a test stroke, and we get these little flakes of rust, as if you used a power tool on a piece of metal that was rusty. This is what would flake off of it. If you make your brush smaller, you get finer flakes. If you make your brush larger, and you get larger flakes. Let's go to the next brush, and that is Flaky Rust. We can keep using the same rust color. We we'll wanna make sure that we're working on a new layer here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a rectangular selection here. We can pretend this is a sheet of metal. I'll switch back to my brush tool, and I'll just paint over that, and I get this nice rusty metal texture. Now, of course, if I make my brush smaller, that texture will be finer. If I make my brush larger, those shapes that are coming out of the brush will be much larger. So that's a great way to make a piece of rusty metal. Let's move on to the next brush, and that is Heavy Rust. We'll create a new layer for that. Let's say this time we want to put it on our background here. 
So we can go to our mask layer, we can right click on it and choose select layer content. And now we want to go to the select menu and we want to invert that selection to turn it inside out. So now when we paint, we're only gonna be able to paint on the background. So let's go to this new layer here that we're painting on. Make sure our brush tool is selected and we can paint with heavy rust. And we can put in this nice background here. Now if you use a bigger brush, you're gonna cover more area and those patterns are going to be larger. If you use a smaller brush, then those patterns are going to be smaller and finer. Now I'm just gonna to try to cover most of the background. I'm not gonna to try to get everything because we'll add some more brushes on top of this. Let's create a new layer and let's go ahead and switch to oxidized now. We'll click on the eyeball for that heavy rust layer and we'll just hide that for a minute. And let's do a test stroke and you can see you get this really nice pattern that looks like old rusty metal. And then of course, if you make your brush larger, that pattern is going to be broader. If you make your brush smaller, then it's going to be a more concentrated pattern. And then of course we could turn the visibility back on for the heavy rust. We can move the heavy rust above the oxidized if we wanted to. We could even play with the slider here to control the blend. So we can kind of get the best of both worlds. That looks kind of cool. I'll just name these layers so that we can see what they are. Let's go ahead and create a new layer above the heavy rust. And we'll try the next brush. And that is patina. As I mentioned earlier, patina is that nice blue green effect that you get on really old copper. Let's select that nice blue green color and we'll paint. You can see I get that nice patina pattern in the background and just tap some of that in. That complements that rust color really nicely. Let's try the next brush and that is rust drip. Let's select a nice rusty color. If you wanted, you could even hold alt and sample one of these colors from the background. Now rust drip is gonna create these nice long drips that kind of flow down. You can just kind of pull them straight down. If you use a smaller brush, then the drips are gonna look more wet, like there's water running down it. If you want them to look more rough and textured, then you use a bigger brush. Let's go ahead and change our brush to Sharp Rust. I'm gonna select kind of a bright color so we can see this here. If we use very heavy pressure, then we get this very jagged kind of steel wool effect. If we use lighter pressure, then we get something that's a bit softer, so we can put in some little textures here and there. Let's move on to the final brush, and that is Tarnished. Let's go ahead and turn our selection inside out by going to Select Invert Selection, so that way we'll be painting only on the bottle here. Let's create a new layer. I'll call it Tarnished. I'm going to select kind of a dirty brownish color here, and I'll just paint in some of that. We get this nice tarnished pattern. If we use a smaller brush, then we get a smaller pattern. If we use a bigger brush, then we get a larger, broader pattern. We can tarnish this a little bit, and then we'll wanna change the composite method up here to multiply. That'll help it blend a lot more nicely. And we can reduce the opacity. So now let's deselect our selection with Control D and we'll take a look at what we have. We turned kind of a boring photograph of an antique bottle into a colorful and textured work of art. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, take a quick second to click the like button and make sure to subscribe for more Corel Painter Essentials tutorials like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.